Hello, here's a quick workflow tip for getting your vector files into Lightwave. So for this demo, I've started out in Affinity Designer, which if you haven't checked it out, it's definitely worth looking at. Let's get this into Lightwave. After a bit of experimentation, I found the best method is firstly to select everything and outline the strokes, expand stroke. Now I'm gonna be using OD's uh, import vector file, which is a free plugin. I think if you have OD root, it should be easily accessible to you. The nice thing about OD's import vector file is that it'll, uh, it'll accept a, a variety of different formats. So if we go to export, what you'll need is PDFs, SVGs, EPSs, or Adobe Illustrator files. Export that, and that should be enough to get you started. But after all of that, I found the most consistent way of getting uh, this into Lightwave is to actually use, somewhat annoyingly, Illustrator. So the way you do that is simply by, assuming you have Illustrator, of course, is to copy, copy those files, jump over to Illustrator, and paste. Again, if you haven't already, uh, make sure your path strokes are outline. If we take a quick peek at the layers, it's all in there, but it's uh, we don't have to split anything up. It's just all on one layer. Now all we have to do is simply save that as an Illustrator document. We've made it to Modeler. I have a shortcut for OD's import vector file here. Click on that file name, it'll tell you the extensions, click open. Use the quad wrangle option uh, as if you've got holes in some of the objects, uh, this helps to keep, to keep the holes. <laughs> uh, field paths only, it doesn't matter too much about this but I'm going to update the smoothing, obviously play around with those, they might be exactly what you want. Click that. And here we are, we have that uh, uh, after, uh, here we are with our Illustrator file in Lightwave. Now the thing I love most about this uh, importing plugin is that it keeps all of the colors that you used in Illustrator. But you'll also notice everything is sitting on top of each other. What you could do is you could manually go through and offset each little part, which is especially useful in if you have third powers translate tool, you can quite easily pick up parts and move them around, but you'll lose the stacking order that you set in your illustration document. And it's very difficult. In fact, I don't think you can constrain, no, you can't to an access using, well, in a perspective view using uh, translate tool. It doesn't pick up a tool in wireframe mode or without any extrusion. So let's fix this by saving it and sending it to layout. So let's get straight to this. P for properties, bring up the properties of the shape object. Nodal displacement is what we'll need. Straight away let's go for mesh part. And then we want to multiply Multiply scalar and a transform or a translate. Keep it simple. So we are going to take each part of the object, multiply it by, let's go 0.5. Now we're going to need a make vector. Make sure my X and Y are not being offset. It's just along the Z that we need to separate them. So uh, push that into there, push that into there, push that into there. Now, this is always confuses me. Switch mode to set, which bases it on its original shape, I think, something along those lines. Uh, and we'll notice it's offset all the parts, but it's offset them in the wrong direction. Multiply minus 0.1, actually minus 0.5 just to see it. Close that down. And that's kind of what we want 
for now. We'll notice there's a bit of shredding going on here. I think there must be a couple of uh, points that have welded themselves together. But for now, that is absolutely fine. So all we need to do is go to save, save endomorph, call it extrude or whatever you like. Save that and then remember to save the current object. Now we've done that back in Modeler, we should see in the morph the extrude, the extruded object exactly as we saved from layout. And the nice thing about this is it's, uh, it remembers the, the stacking order of your file in the illustration. But we want to apply that to our base object. Let's go to map, apply morph, extrude, strength 100%. There we go, so that's now our base object. Now we have the starting point to do whatever we want to do with our model. Just as an aside, I don't know if anybody from New Tech is watching, but we have in our move an option under texture, an option to use the node editor. So if we go to procedural textures, uh, node editor, set that to one, edit nodes. Unfortunately, this uh, the mesh part doesn't seem to uh, have any effect. So if somebody's watching, if this was implemented, it would save a trip to layout. Thanks a lot.